Welcome back, everybody. Let's talk about part five, uh, final discussion on the, and, and, and review of the Wakanda Forever film. We're discussing the future of the Black Panther character and its world in the MCU. Brian, let's get to a topic. We'll save the kid for later, <laughs> but Doom. Yeah. Brian, as you already know, we've discussed it on a number of occasions. My expectations, our expectations, many people's expectations. That Doom would possibly be the one behind all that was happening. Or has something to do with what was happening. Uh, between Tarot Khan and Wakanda. And you, you seem to believe that they had plans for for Doom, and they decided against it. Um, you stated in, in our previous conversations on the film that Lake Bell was a character that was there in the beginning, and then she was forgotten. Lake Bell has ties to Doom, correct? Well, the the character of Doctor Graham. The rumor was she was sort of his agent in the field, yeah. which would line up really well with that scene where she's kind of quarterbacking the underwater operation that gets hijacked by Namor. Yeah. But it just felt like the actress is too high profile for the role that as it was played in the movie. Mm -hmm. And it makes a lot more sense if that act if that part had like a coda to it. That was a second end credit scene where yeah. you effect, you effectively find out that yeah doom was the one behind this device that was sort of sweeping the ocean floor for vibranium and ultimately mm -hmm. caused the conflict that would make a lot more sense so i'm i'm I've, I've increased my confidence that there was a doom scene shot at one point that they decided for some reason that maybe would be a distraction to this film that they only went with the mid credit scene and didn't use an end credits. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was very disappointed, Brian. Um, I, everybody was saying that there was no end credit scene. There was only a mid credit scene. So having known, having known that, I didn't obviously stick around. The hope was to stick around and see, you know, the doom shot, a helmet or whatever to point to to him, which I think would have gotten everybody hyped for the future. Right now, they haven't done a very good job in doing that. Um, other than, let's talk about this, Brian, um, the kid. But before we move on, anything you want to add to? Yeah, I, I want to talk about doing bigger picture okay. for the future because it does feel like something has changed. Because we have, right, so we have this rumor, there was this scene, you see the movie, you do feel like there was a character who should have been paired with Doom that didn't happen. You then read a report that suggests they don't want to use Doom in the Fantastic Four film. You then have this bizarre, right, Howard Stern rumor where he says he's prepping to do a Doom project. Mm -hmm. But we don't exactly know what that is. Mm-hmm. I am wondering whether the transition that occurred on the Fantastic Four film has had an impact on their plans for Doom in the sense that, remember, this was supposed to be John Watts. They probably had some inkling of an idea of what they wanted to do with Fantastic Four. Watts leaves the project. They, then, they now have Shackman. They're now getting in the writer's room for this movie. And this happens right before Wakanda Forever comes out. And I just wonder if Shackman's vision and the writer's direction has now gone in a, in a different course to where they're like, you know what, we're going to shelve Doom entirely for a while. And that's why they took the scene out. That's why they maybe don't want him in the Fantastic Four movie. And maybe we just don't see Victor Von Doom for a while, which is a little bit of a disappointment, but it does feel like something has shifted big picture here. It's quite possible, especially Doom not being 
um, Doom not being the villain for Fantastic Four, which I'm fine with, Brian, because we don't need to see him right now. Again, Doom is somebody... Listen, if it was me in the MCU, Doom, Doom would have his own show. And that's not even... I would do like his background going whatever to get people because this Doom is a very interesting character from from when he how he grows up the stuff that he gets into his personality everything um again I don't I I have to send you the link Brian where I think Comics Explained goes over a, a, a series of 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 interviews in comic book form where Doom. Is this in, this guy is is conducting an interview with Doom, and at the end of the the, the interview, he's discovered to be a Doom bot, and the interview interviewer stays in prison, never to be seen again. <laughs> um, but he tells a fascinating story uh, about his motivations and and why he is what he is. Who knows if we get that? Um, who knows if they're thinking about that? Because again, Brian Doom can't be just another he. He has to be on Thanos' level and probably it just has to be up there. So that is the piece that makes sense, which is if you are trying to put all eyes on Kang as the arch nemesis of this arc of films, Doom <laughs> is probably competing with that if you really unleash him in one or more projects. And I wonder if maybe there is a little bit of, you know what, we don't want them to share the stage. We want to clear out for Jonathan Majors. Yeah. We'll have our villains along the way, but Victor Von Doom is too big to pull out at this point. And maybe that's, you know, when when Shackman came in and when they started to do the writing, they said, yeah, look, let's, let's focus on the family maybe go with a lesser villain or something different, or I don't know. I mean, it, it's supposedly a space exploration story, but there's a part of me that's like, after having seen Tenoch Huerta, could, I don't know, would they throw him in a Fantastic Four movie, given his ties to the characters? Could they pull that off? Quite possibly. Again, I told you, I want to see Tenoch Huerta <laughs> game Suso. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And not let go of that, 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 that feeling he got. Uh, Cause that would be interesting to see. Cause he, Tenoch Huerta, again, did a fantastic job as Namor. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing more more of his character in the MCU. Um, having heard you out, Brian, in terms of the thinking behind it, it makes sense. I mean, I would probably have to say, like, yeah, let's not do it. Because we, we don't even know what we're doing with Fantastic Four. And to have this dude just sitting there and we don't know what storylines we're building him into. I mean, he is involved in Secret Wars, Brian. He's a, he's involved in some of these storylines. So I don't know after Kang Dynasty, how long will the gap be between Kang Dynasty and Secret War? That would be the question for me uh, to ask. Because if it's like back to back like they did with Infinity War, then... I don't know if we build up to a Doom character in its in its best um, uh, perf not performance but um, delivery for Marvel because again Doom is is just top tier. Yeah, but and, that's my point, right? Yeah. It's like I would be pretty disappointed if all of a sudden they're going to shoehorn him in as a supporting villain just in Kang Dynasty and in Secret Wars. So, but my 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 point would be. If if you have a, you know, if you have a transcendent villain in Kang and you add a second transcendent villain in Doom, based upon the heroic team we have right now, I mean, they would be like they'd have no chance. Like they don't, have, they don't have a chance against like the two of them. There's no. Yeah. So it almost does feel like overkill, and almost feels like even though Doom in the comics has ties maybe to Secret Wars, they would write him out of that in the movie and basically say like we want him to be in a different arc maybe in the next you know maybe in the phase beyond i don't know i like i said i think a lot of this circles back to they have an avengers problem that that, that the avengers lineup is the weak link of what they're trying to do here and like you need this balance between you know the villain and the heroes and so you know it's funny i went back and i, I watched endgame again recently um and you know you watch that final battle and you get that sense of like how 
difficult to beat Thanos actually is. Yeah. And it takes an army literally to, <laughs> to neutralize him, you know, and even then they're not able to sort of destroy him. And so yeah. that's why in my head, I'm like, yeah, the team we got now, if I send them up against, you know, Kang and Doom, then no way they'll come out. There's no credible storyline where I'm like, yep, they figured it out and beat him. Not a chance. Yeah, yeah, a chance. yeah, yeah. Without, I mean, yeah, without Fantastic Four. I mean, let's, that's why these these characters, Brian, they haven't been too impressive. Hopefully, I mean, the future of the Avengers is not looking too bright. We got a mess in the Hulk. Who's raising a kid? I, that I don't. That's gonna get killed, and he's gonna turn into World War Hulk, and it's gonna be like, okay, I already see what's coming. Captain America is probably still on the moon. I don't know if he come back. I think he might come back, Brian. I think you'd be stupid not to do do so. I I don't. I they think gotta he give Mackie back. his shine. I mean, they got. I mean, that's the point of New of World. course, they, they of course. We yeah, don't know where cool. Secret Wars is gonna be. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So when Secret Wars come over, Kang Dynasty, Kang Dynasty. I don't know, Brian. I don't know what. I'm just thinking, like, so then they had Scarlet Witch. They had her break bad. And they buried her. Now, obviously, she's going to come back at some point. But the the character as it is now, unless they're using an alternate Earth version of her, which is possible, they've lost one of their most powerful sort of heroes that had some existing connection to the fan base. So you've got Captain Marvel, which is a flawed character right now, extremely powerful, but really hasn't connected with the audience the way I think they hoped. And then you've got, you know, you've got kind of a lot of, and then Thor, who's become sort of comic relief and seems more intent on quote unquote finding himself <clears throat> and being a hero. Like at, at some point, you just go down the line, and now you've got a bunch of the unproven's, right? So it's like Shang Chi. That's a big step up from where he's at. Good start, but big step up that he mm -hmm. to get into that elite class. Doctor Strange. Yeah, he's probably there, but like I think we saw in Doc Strange too, like the limitations of that character as a character in this line. I'm super powerful, magic is super useful, but how many times can to, you go to the? It's to hard the, to, to build the, the team around him. <clears throat> yeah, you know? yeah, and that sounds like we're getting Tom Holland back for Spider Man, so that's good. But again, Spider Man against a global time traveling threat needs help. Like he's just not strong enough. You got a new Black Panther, but. Maybe she's caretaking for the next. I, it's a, it's, it is a mess. It, you just yeah, don't yeah. have the cohesion you had when it was sort of like RDJ begets the way Thor was portrayed, begets the way Chris Evans was playing Steve Rogers, begets, okay, now we're going to bring in, you know, Mark Ruffalo's, which I thought was quite good at the start, sort of angry, angry Hulk. Like, that had that sense of like, okay, and then we're going to send them up against Loki, and then we're going to send them up against Ultron, and we're going to, build them up and build their team out and then we're going to go against Thanos and it's just like we're a long way from that yeah yeah um, let's talk about the kid Cute I'd imagine kid, by the way yes he, yes yes he was awesome. yeah um when I first saw that scene in Haiti, I was like, one of these kids is him. <laughs> so <laughs> it's true. Did you know that? I, well, I remember when I saw his face, I was like, oh, that's the kid from, from early on. When yeah, they, exactly. They, so they, yeah, they yeah. actually hit him in plain sight. I was oh, like, yeah. that's actually a little genius that they put yeah. him in the in the scene. You don't know who he is until the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I did, again, they did a fantastic job in hiding that. No one was really talking about it. There have been rumors about it, but no one was really talking about it. I was really out there trying to uh, really uh, sell this theory, which came to be true, and, it, and, it, and it, they did a good job in hiding that secret. Now, what happens now? You said, Brian, that... My, if, if it was up to me, Brian, I would do a series on that right there. 
her raising her son, putting him in the best schools, him learning the ropes. Again, Black Panther's a smart dude. He's well-educated. He's well, you know, you know, acquainted with the world. And so to see that possibly in a series, I think would make sense. Um, what do you think? I think you're right. I think that's what's going to happen. I think you think that's what's going to happen. Yep. I think I that's already a, know it's going to happen. You, I told you, you multiple you series of Wakanda. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I, what I don't know is exactly what phase of life you're going to see him. I don't think it would be a series with the kid at this age. Mm -hmm. I think they probably would fast forward a couple of years. He's more of like a teenager. That would be my guess. Remember, Marvel, do, yeah, remember though, do. Disney's trying to connect with young audiences, right? You, okay. you, you see it across like <clears throat> this is business. The, uh, the first generation that led up to Endgame, they have the numbers on where they were strongest with audiences. And the reality is, if you think about somebody who was in their 20s and enamored with these films when Iron Man 1 came up, like, they're now approaching their late thirties. They're approaching forty. Like that's just the reality of time. Yeah, and so yeah. the there's there's clearly this between Miss Marvel and all these young Avengers that have been dropped into these d different shows. Like they are trying to push younger where they can. Yeah. And you know, you look at Riri Williams, right? That's clearly in the same vein. So, kid, kid T'Challa, kid Prince T'Challa makes a ton of sense. Now I think. Eight-year-old Prince T'Challa, I don't know you can build a show around that. 14-year-old mm. Prince T'Challa, you might be able to build a show around that. You, you might be able to build something interesting around that. And if Lupita Nyong'o is already signed to do it, which I'm sure she would be, mm. and you can bring in some, you know, hey, Latricia Wright shows up for an episode or M'Baku shows up for an episode. They're not saying no. Because yeah. they understand like what this leads to and how important it is. So I absolutely think it's happening. It makes perfect sense. And it forms the bridge to when <clears> you <throat> unleash the fully formed T'Challa in the future MCU, which we always knew was going to happen. Yeah. Regardless of what they said. And when they're, they're all they're going to be doing is taking temperature on when the fan base is clamoring to see this character as an adult taking up the mantle and when that's apparent you'll get it yeah and it'll be a, another glorious day at the movie theaters everybody's gonna be waiting this is gonna be another event black panther to me man that movie is an event each and every time it comes out you know if you do four or five eight, eight each and every time you make a movie black panther i think is an event but um, you're right i think mm -hmm. so it was five years in part due to the pandemic but five years between you know, Black Panther, Black Panther 1 was February of 18, and now we get this at the end of 2022. I would probably say it'll be at least five years before you see the sequel to this movie. Just looking at the calendar they have mm -hmm. and the pieces they've laid out. And, and I do want to circle back to this because having seen this movie, even though it's not perfect, I am more convinced than ever Ryan Kluger's not coming back to direct another one of these. Oh, no, 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 no. I think this was his swan song. That credit yes. scene to me kind of sealed it. When you see yeah. that, like, she's she has the cathartic moment, she burns it, you get the memories, and she introduces the son, that to me for, felt like his way of saying, I tied this up and I left it. And I'll for produce someone to take and I'll help over, you yes. write, but this yes. is someone else's challenge now. Yes, I agree with you 100%. I think that's what's going to happen. Um, unless who knows if Kuga gets inspired to do some to to come back. I don't know, maybe, but right now, obviously, he's done with it. Um, so let's see. I think he's more likely, honestly, <clears throat> to like if they did the young to Prince T'Challa series, I think he's more likely to direct an episode. Like okay. that's not an on right. He 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 produces it, he jumps in, he does the pilot, and then sits back. That I can't see him doing another one of these movies. This movie felt very cathartic for him just watching yeah. you know, even, even with the flaws just the main thrust of the movie it felt completed from his perspective yes 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 um Brian, anything else before we wrap up <clears throat> yeah so i did want to dig in a little bit more on the on so two things so one is we've discussed so where where would you ideally put namor you and i are in agreement we would not have a namor film for him 
Mm-hmm. You know, I just floated the idea of Fantastic Four, but it doesn't really fit with what we've heard about it being a space exploration movie. He's not really a space character. Um, so where do you want? Because it, it feels like this was the kind of performance you don't want to leave on the shelf for four years. So where does he most logically and most in a most exciting way, where does he go into the universe next? I think, Brian, he is possibly the only person who can lead an Avengers team. Interesting. So like for Secret Wars, you put a lot, have him align with them for that fight. He's powerful but, enough. I mean, yeah. Unless you capture him and throw him in the desert. <laughs> Which Kang would certainly <laughs> know how to defeat him, I'm sure. But yeah. <laughs> but he's the only one experienced enough, the only one lethal enough to deal with whatever is coming their way. So I think that would be the position to put him in. I don't know how long they have um, with um, until they get to a a Fantastic Four film, which would be the perfect place to put him, I think. Who knows that things might change, Brian? They don't, I don't think they- I mean, time-wise that fits. Yeah. So if you had him there in 24 and then he comes back in Secret Wars and let's say it's, let's say that's in 2027. I, I'm kind of with you because I feel like, like I said, if we're waiting for Wakanda Forever 2, which I don't think he would even be in. That's the weird thing. Like, even though this is set up to be him versus Wakanda in a weird way, it feels like he wouldn't be the centerpiece villain of the next Wakanda movie. Um, so, he yeah, that's how he's, he's, like he's an Avenger, right? I'm like, where do I put him? Like, yeah, he's, he, he's an Avenger, right? At times. Yeah. I mean, like I said, he, as I said, he, he only really has one true allegiance. So I could definitely see in a secret war scenario where you could write something that makes him want to align with the good guys for the fight against Kang. Um, but it just feels like the, the performance, the way it's written and coming out of this, it does feel like. They have to be sitting there saying, we have to get this guy back on screen. Yeah, I know. I know. But how? Because the next time you do it, it can't be Aquaman 2, which I think is going to be a disaster. <laughs> um, Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's the dilemma. Because you don't give him his own film. He's one of these characters, Brian, that he just pops up. I think he's always been that. One of these characters that... When all else fails and or they need something, or he's one, he's like a he's like Magneto. He's like um, yeah, some of these characters that you that they pop up and when they need him, you know what who they are. We don't need a backstory to them, but we know that they 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 can possibly help in some way. And that they they're usually ruthless and lethal individuals as well, you know, when they when they're left with no choice but to go to someone to assist. So I mean, that's the only role I see see for him and uh it'll be interesting to see where they take him brian because you can make a lot of mistakes with this film especially putting him let's say you do let's say they want to go crazy and do a submariner film it can't look the way they looked brian that underwater oh you world, mean the underwater style yeah they it, have, can't, they have... it, it, it can't look like yeah. that i agree and what purpose that would it serve him? Would is it just an underwater thing with this other dude? I forget what was his name. Uh, the big guy that fought Okoye, uh, Atuma. Atuma is well, it actually, him uh, and Namora, right? You could tell Namora yes, felt yes, some yes. kind of way about the yes. way that movie ended. So yeah, is why does that interest you? I mean, it does, but it's like. See, the issue with characters like this is that like part of what makes them great is that they're in a tension with other characters. It, it's it's part of the reason why, like, while I respected the achievement that was Todd Phillips' Joker, the Joker without Batman is not the same. No. It, it just isn't. And so yeah. I felt a little bit like that with this character where I was like, this is a great performance. This is a very interesting character. But it's a character that needs a counterbalance to be truly great 
in any story. If I just make him the the true center of the entire story, I think this I think the story is weakened in a weird way. Yeah. Um that so that's my struggle is like he has to be opposite something that brings out his moral dilemma. Mm -hmm. So I don't know like flashing back to his early days at Talokan. I mean, I'll watch it, but like I don't think it would I think it would be a step down from what we just saw. Yeah, that, they have quite a few things to figure out with that. But it's like it's a good problem to have, right? Like you have an actor who just who tapped into something, gave us a memorable performance, and we're like, great, we're ready to see more. But it's a stressful problem it's hard, because like, yeah, you could ruin that if you put him in the wrong situation. Um, so and what's now, it, the, the ultimate thing is what situation do you put him in? And that's what they have to answer. Yeah. Um, so the other thing I want to ask you about, because I we didn't talk about it in the supporting cast, because honestly, I didn't feel like they merited it, but okay, so what's really going on with Count with um uh, Countess Valentina Allegra de Fonte? What what is going on here? Because I'm like just I mean, she already sort of showed her hands when I think Everett was talking to her about, you know, owning the vibranium. And she said, oh, I would love that. Something about, you know, owning all the vibranium, take it over, whatever. I think she, that's, that's um, her mission, I guess, for whomever she's working for. Um, I don't know if the plan, and people have been saying that the plan might be to get vibranium out of Wakanda with the Thunderbolt. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, Brian. I'm still like, we already have David Harbour talking about these these guys are losers. And it's like, okay. Yeah, so I don't know. We don't, need, we don't need Suicide Squad again. I mean, yeah. even though that's what this is. I, I'm just saying, I'm trying to tie together her initial appearance where she sends Yelena Belova after Clint Barton, which really didn't pay off that well in the yeah. Hawkeye series, quite yeah. honestly, to... Now this appearance, which I don't feel like added anything to this movie at all, but clearly, you know, this doesn't happen by accident, right? So I do have to give the res the benefit of the doubt to the parliament to say, like, they had Julia Louis Dreyfus and they had her for more than one. Se this wasn't Nick Fury popping up in the shadows at the end of Iron Man One. She had lines, she had scenes. Man. That's not an accident. I just can't figure out what it's supposed to be. Like I know they're ultimately teeing up thunderbolts but i didn't feel like thunderbolts was furthered as an agenda in this movie at all yeah at so all. i'm just sort of like confused as to what this version of the cat oh right and then she did the u.s agent recruitment in falcon and winter soul so like that was the only one of these that felt um expected like she pops, mm -hmm. pops up she recruits u.s agent she's putting her team together all right that scene made sense to me Everything else has felt very uneven and almost like they don't know what exactly what they're doing with the character. But it, yeah, I, it's one of those things where I'm like, I know this leads somewhere, but it, yeah, they it's made, almost they, they, the category, these post credit scenes where we're like, we're seeing a big name actor or actress and we're like, we don't really know where this is going. Like, why do we care? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I think we talked about it previously as well i mean she would have been better served as an end credit scene um with a cliffhanger they could have done they could have wrote her like you know they could have made that revelation that she was tracking ever ross with the beads at the end or something like that you know i don't know but it yeah. was yeah like you said it did it just the amount of screen time she had meant that's another 10 minutes possibly that you didn't yeah. need Hundred percent, hundred percent, and like I got to tie this now to like a, a, a little broader discussion because we've gotten the confirmation that Harrison Ford is Thunderbolt Ross, in the you know, and he's he's coming in Captain America: New World Order, but obviously he's he's going to be involved in the Thunderbolts. I mean his his name is in is on the team, yeah. And you get the rumors that they're actually going to unleash the Red Hulk persona through him, and so now I'm just like. What's going on? So you got him <laughs> as a Hulk, maybe, and now you got her 
recruiting. I, I, like I said, I'm kind of just scratching my head. Like I'm not that excited for this Thunderbolts movie and they're not doing a good job of getting me excited for it. Yeah. Me, me neither, man. I, I guess the only thing you can look forward to is Yelena Bolova's performance. You know, there's going to be a lot of goofy situations. <laughs> I am not looking forward to seeing this, Brian. I, I'm just I'm curious to see what this is gonna be, if it's gonna be similar to the to the to the movie uh Suicide Squad, the first two films, in any in any way, shape, or form. We got a, a whack hulk, green hulk, and now we're gonna get this red hulk that we'll probably only see once. Harrison Ford is sticking around for, also for made multiple it. films, so I don't know what the hell's I I I, I don't get it. I mean it's also an assumption that Harrison Ford's going to be alive. I mean, he's in his eight, he's going to be in his eighties when he's doing this. So, like, I mean, it, it made me less excited for. I mean, we, you and I were down on the casting. It, it made me even less excited when I saw this report that Red Hulk he was going to have his Red Hulk persona, and I'm just like, I, I don't get it. But I guess which leads back to the real kind of overarching question, Pablo, which is: This is the end of Phase Four, as, as they revised it. Any way you cut it, this was a disappointing year for Marvel. I mean, all in, I don't know how else to say it. Like yeah. it was. Uh, and I think it's weird because we had this conversation at the end of last year and we kind of were like, yeah, well, you know, maybe it was a pandemic a little bit, but it was kind of an uneven year last year, right? Eternals, yeah. disappointment. I thought Black Widow, disappointing. You thought Shang-Chi, disappointing to you. The, other than No Way Home, which left us feeling high at the end of the year, there really wasn't anything else where we were kind of like, it lived up to the expectation and then some. Yeah. So, you know, we, I, excuse me, Loki was the only, only other thing that did. Yeah. But 2022 almost feels like an even bigger disappointment with what Doc Strange could have been and wasn't, with what Thor Love and Thunder could have been, and wasn't, with what, you know, the further declines of the Hulk. The TV series having some high points, but being kind of uneven. You know, we like Moon Knight. We liked a little bit of Miss Marvel, but they weren't like massive hits. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, this movie was really good, but it maybe didn't quite reach the heights that we thought might be possible. And certainly the mm -hmm. box office almost reflects that. So how are you feeling? How's your Marvel temperature as we head <clears> toward <throat> Quantumania and, and Phase 5? I think... This movie ending phase four leaves me hopeful somewhat, somewhat. Because I've said that this movie and Quantumania are two pivotal movies. And they both have to be successful and help us along in getting excited for whatever comes next because that's the whole point mm -hmm. um none of the prior films what we were expecting with multiples of madness we did not get whatsoever we got a nope. different film i i did not expect that i thought multiverse of madness was going to be something that'll help us explore other things but this is just a crazy mother going after her kids using a kid that can jump through multi through 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 dimensions or whatever and then Thor Love and Thunder man I, I I remember Brian saying Thor Love and Thunder might be the best film of the MCU I remember saying that we had a show about it how it could be and it was yeah. tragic <laughs> that's what it was it was tragic And now we get this film, which again, Brian, it had my attention for a lot of parts of the film. There was some, again, there was some moments that I didn't care for. And I think weren't needed. This movie didn't need to be that long, but I like the way it sets up the future, Brian. I like the characters. They just got to get tighter with their storytelling here and give us a tighter film. Again, one of the reasons why I think most people like the first one is because it was a very simple storyline. This one was much more complex. And it could have been complex. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the unnecessary stuff that they, they put in yeah. there that made it like, what the hell is this? 
you know? So, who knows? Um, the future of the MCU is not... I'm not... Listen, I'm excited for Quantumania. I, this is one... Because after Quantumania, if I'm failed, if they don't satisfy my MCU, like, excitement of, like, the seeing the crowd... If I don't get that, Brian, not to say that I'm done... But I'll be looking to I'll be looking forward to seeing what DC got planned. Because I've had I, I would probably say I've had enough of this, whatever it is that they're trying to do. Well, you already took you already you're already boycotting Flashpoint, so you yeah, might, I'm you not, might yeah, not have yeah, anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not I, I I'm not gonna um yeah, look. I think the audience so I think if you're giving notes to Marvel, we're talking about the future. Number one, you hit on it. They gotta cut 30 minutes out of these movies. The, the audience is telling you that. The audience mm. is telling you very clearly, give me 210 and under. That's what we want to see. There's no reason they can't do that. They were doing it in the first phases. They can do that. Yeah. The second thing, like I said, is, you, it, it is it's so ironic to be here. We spent 10 years complaining about the Marvel villain problem, and yet I feel like in this most recent phase, the most interesting characters have generally been the antagonists, right? Mm -hmm. Kang, uh, Namor, even the way they flipped Scarlet Witch, I mean, she at least was interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. Gore was interesting to me. Wen Wu was interesting to me. You got to write better heroes. I don't know what happened yeah, here, but yeah, it, yeah. it really is getting back to the <laughs> basics of hero origin stories. And, you know, the casting is fine. I don't think it's the actors. Like, I think it's, it's just the way they're building these initial stories is not working and resonating the way it did with Iron Man, Thor, and Cap. And yeah. that's what they got to kind of get. And yeah, most of the, Black Panther always said like that, like I said, you had the Civil War lead in, so that helped. But yeah, like ever since Captain Marvel, they have been struggling with these sort of intro films for new characters. And it's the heroes that have to get better. That's what I would give them as a number two note. The number three, the thing that, and this ties to quantum mania, because we already know we're getting a good antagonist performance in that. That's a lock. We already can't wait to see Jonathan Majors. They do need to, they, the audience is telling Marvel, we care about the visuals. They, it has started to become an issue, right? It's become one of those things where like, they could get away with a little bit of shoddy CGI when the characters were super compelling and we were hurtling toward Endgame. And now the audience, because of the VFX stuff, because of the, it's much more public. And so Quantumania, I think, is a really big challenge for Marvel, which is that's a movie that needs to look sharp because it's all going to be effects. It's all going to be CGI. If that looks sloppy, like if that looks bad, I think people are really going to be turned off. So... That's probably the thing about that movie I'm most nervous about just because I feel like, all right, Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, Michael Douglas, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Jonathan Majors. We're fine from a cast perspective. So make this movie look good and let's make the drama between Kang and Ant-Man feel as real as we think it can be. You give me those two things, I think we're going to feel more excited about Phase 5. But yeah, I don't know. I'm nervous. I'm nervous because we we... The box office is showing the early signs of real fatigue. The fact that this Wakanda movie is probably going to do a billion, but it's going to take some work, to me, ought to be a warning sign to the higher-ups at Disney that they need to do better. And I will say to people, and this is going to sound weird, I think the single best piece of news that we got out of Disney in the last couple of months was the announcement the other day that they are engaging in a major cost-cutting program. Because I think that's going to mean less content. And I think less content is going to mean better needed. content. <clears throat> yeah. That's my yeah. hope. When I saw that, I was like, okay, so you're going to be, you're doing less shows is what you're basically saying. Not your film budgets. You're going to do less shows. Maybe you do three films a year instead of four. But that I think could help. I think there's I think, too much. Right yeah, now. I think if you do two or three shows that are not just six episodes, you give us twelve good episodes. I mean, and we get eighteen. And or that's the that's, that's the, the manual. Model. That's the manual. Everybody at Disney should be looking at that show and saying, well, "How can we do that 
in our in our characters. Twelve episodes, clear storytelling. The way that it's this show is almost perfect, and like I don't get why we can't do that in the MCU. We got a little bit with Captain America: Winter Soldier. That's why it's the best movie, in my opinion. Oh man, I can't believe like the hype for Andor is not. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. I, I think Disney it. knows though. You see that they're going to start re-airing those episodes on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. To get people to to watch it, they know because, what they got. Yeah, because Andor is just amazing. That's when I saw that too. I was like, oh snap! They're really trying to get people to watch this. Forget about you know. So that so that way it hopefully it turns into subscribers. Yeah. Um. So the future of the MCU after Black Panther looks pretty grim because the only thing I can think of after Quantum Mania is literally nothing. What? Well, what I mean, what we is... know Blade is black back to square one. So we're okay, smart, yeah. right? We know that. So that yes. that movie is basically off the board. Yeah. Fantastic Four has literally just started, literally. So. But that's a that's probably the most important thing we have on the board right now. The Marvels is, is the Marvels coming out next year. Marvels Marvels is done. I mean, Marvels film is uh -huh. finished. Like whatever it's going to be is going to be. I, I am I am not optimistic. Are you? Uh, no. The only other thing I'm the only two things I'm super. I do think it's going to be a better television year because we get Loki season two, and we get Secret Invasion. Those nah. two things, I, I think, might upstage the films after Quantum Mania. Yeah, I think Brian. Um, before we sign off, one last thing. Um, I think if we get more word about a special presentation, Silver Surfer, and we get that before Fantastic Four. That's, I think, definitely going to be the arrival of Galactus. In fact, I think anyway. That's going for it. I think you, to have that on right, like a space exploration where they run into Galactus in the first film. Holy moly. That's, <laughs> that's only, that's only, I mean, if we get that silver surfer, uh, special presentation, which I think would be awesome, but I don't know. Let's see. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of, uh, this, uh, this review, what you thought of the film. Do you agree, disagree with what some of the, the, the perspectives we had on this film and some of the characters, the action sequences, the way this movie was directed, the visuals, all that? Let us know in the comment section below. And before we sign off, uh, we got to say RIP to uh, Mr. Kevin Conroy, man. I was listening to Justice. I was watching Justice League Unlimited today. I started watching it yesterday, actually. And it is just such a joy to watch. And, and not because of him. It, it's just, he was, for me, was the, like the Batman that I grew up with. And I was reading, and I, and I think I was reading, or I was listening to something where they said Kevin Conroy was the first guy to do both voices. Both the Batman and the Bruce Wayne, like separate them into two different people, which is something, Brian, that you and I agreed needs to happen with uh the Bruce Wayne in the Batman Matt Reeves uh version in his yeah. in his world. So let's see. Uh but whatever Hall of Fame exists for for someone like this, he needs to be in it cuz he was iconic for the Batman character. Um and I'm going to be listening to his voice because I, I stay re-watching the animated series and Justice League stuff. So um yeah, he's such an icon and, and I'm and I'm pretty sure he's gonna be missed. Uh, I would have hoped he would have voiced the 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 next the Cape Crusader uh cartoon. Um but yeah, man. It's yeah, it's, 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 it's it's uh it's a huge loss for uh the world of uh of DC and comic books. Yeah, it's a, it's a great call. I mean, it's like there are there are characters who so many kids and generations know but can identify. And his voice for so many people, I think, is Batman. Like yeah. more than anyone. Like 
I mean, the animated show comes on in the early 90s. And he, between that, Just Think Unlimited, he was still doing it on occasion. He didn't do every DC movie, or yeah. animated movie, sorry. Mm -hmm. But he he continued to voice the character even more recently. And his voice really didn't change as he aged. I mean, he was only 66, but he pretty much sounded the same mm -hmm. that he had, you know, 20, 30 years ago. But yeah, no, I think it, it's funny, like to me, I was trying to think of like the voices, just the voices. And I think for everyone, probably James Earl Jones as Darth Vader is probably number one. I think for mm -hmm. people, that's probably like the all timer of like, you, yeah, in, in cinema. But I think he's probably in the top three. I was probably going to say maybe Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime. Like he's probably up there. Like most people, I don't think would know it's Peter Cullen, but if you, mm -hmm. you, show, you played Optimus Prime's voice, they'd be like, oh, that's Optimus Prime. <laughs> um, so you know, there's, there's a couple of those where it's like they are legendary for how they sound. And yeah, yeah I mean, he will he will definitely be missed. It's weird. I We still haven't, for, we still haven't gotten a final confirmation of where Cape Crusader is going to land. And then part of me was like, so if Hulu was to win this and Disney has that re-speecher, could they somehow still have him voice back in, even if he's gone? Like, would that be okay? I don't know. But uh, but yeah, no, it was it was a sad headline to read the other day. And so yeah, for a lot of people, he he will be the voice of Batman forever. Yeah, yeah. May he rest in peace. And uh let us know what in, in the comment section below, what's your favorite Batman? episode of the batman animated series i know there's a lot but i'm sure there's a favorite because i have mine i have it actually written down right i have season one episode 34 i am the knight i have season one episode 35 almost got him and season one episode 51 to 52 of uh, robin's reckoning so there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot more, but um, those are the only three that I have up right, right now. But yeah, man, if you haven't watched Batman the Animated Series, and if you're watching this, I'm pretty sure you have. But if you know anybody that is into comics and hasn't watched them, put them on, please. Put them on. Um, that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerdy Report.